We've painted a massive Leagues of Votan Trans Hyperion Alliance army. This army has been painted by Greg, one of the artists here at Siege from our Warrior Workshop team. The army consists of loads of miniatures, and some probably my favorite models, which you've got the Hecaton Land Fortresses, you've got some Sagittars, you've got some Pioneers, some Thunderkin, some Hearthguard, and a whole group of characters uh, to lead that army, along with lots of infantry. So Warrior Workshop is our tabletop alternative level here at Siege Studios. Uh, it's more of an airbrush style with less edge highlighting, uh, still giving you a really phenomenal set of miniatures as you'll see in this video, uh, but just something that's more designed for tournaments, gaming and things of that nature. So let's jump in and have a look at this phenomenal massive army. Let's go and have a look at probably one of the biggest models in the force, which is the Hecaton Land Fortress. So the Hecaton Land Fortress is a great model. As I mentioned, I do absolutely love the use of color on this. Uh, obviously we've got a really nice transition from dark orange through to a much brighter orange on the top which is great i love the use of purple as an accent color for some of the lights and details especially on the front of it here you've got all these lights and things which is just great um, also using red as you can see here just on some of the, the lenses and targeting arrays and things for some of these sort of other weaponry systems that are just on the side of the armor um, and i absolutely love the use of the snow that's been done on the uh, on the sort of wheels and stuff and then just catching on some of these undersides here. Just really shows that integration with the world and environment that the model is actually set within, which I think is brilliant. You've got this lovely white stripe here that's just been put on as well so that the uh, trans Hyperion Alliance sort of symbol can be put on there quite nicely. Um, as mentioned, you've got some black areas, obviously, on the armor panel and just allow us to add a bit of contrast for the transfers. You've got, the, again, those purple lights there on the back as well, which is just really great. Um, and you can see, obviously, all the snow effects that have been added just to really show the integration, as I mentioned, with the world. Uh, but this is just one of the awesome Hecaton Land Forces uh, and they are all fully magnetized so that the parts are interchangeable and our client can literally just select whichever weapons they want for uh, for, for gaming purposes uh, and that's one of the Hecaton Land Fortresses. Next we've got Sagittar, again really great miniature, uh, really sort of cool little details on him. I love the use again of the, uh, the snow effects to integrate with this model. We've got obviously quite a bit built up here on the canopy which is a great use of sort of like how snow would have hit the front of the vehicle if it's it's sort of going through sort of that terrain. Uh, again, all the weapons are fully magnetized, so they are interchangeable for our client. Uh, and again, the client can use whichever weapon systems they want for these. Again, you've got that main dominant orange again there with obviously the lovely transition to darker orange at the bottoms. And again, use of that purple on some of the lights and things, which is just great, real high contrast and just adds interest to those specific details. Uh, so that's just one of these awesome Sagittars. And again, lots of black armor paneling on these as well, just obviously so that the high contrast white trans Hyperion Alliance can be visible obviously on those panels. And then you can see the lovely weathering that's been done just across every facet and angle of the armored sort of areas of the miniature just to show that integration and tells that story of the environment that it's been within. So that's one of these awesome Sagittars. So here's one of the awesome Thunderkin. Uh, as I mentioned, really, really do love these miniatures. Uh, again, lots and lots of detail on these, obviously with all the lenses and things on the scopes and also sort of the goggles and visors that each of these sort of uh, infantry models has. You've got lovely use of subtle purple there on just some of the sort of weaponry and also the light on the chest. Again, you can see that brilliant weathering that's been done just across all the armored areas. And again, you can see the use of that gun metal that's been used to contrast the orange really well. Uh, we've got obviously the white striping just on sort of that shoulder guard armored shield there with the trans Hyperion Alliance on it as well, which is just great. But that's one of the Thunderkin Warriors from the Force. So let's have a look at one of these Hearthkin Pioneers. As I mentioned, there's uh, 18 of them in the force, and this one is fully magnetized with, uh, with uh, all weapon options available, so you can just interchange those quite nicely. Again, the use of purple just on the cloaks and also the lights as well, just to really break up the orange and also distinguish certain aspects and parts of the miniature, which is great. I love the use of some of these warmer, lighter tones just on some of the sort of uh, gun casings and sort of uh, pouches and things, which is just really nice. Again, you can see the weathering that's been done throughout the miniature. Again, you've got that really nice transition and subtle changing the orange hue on the armored areas obviously as per the warrior workshop kind of style that we've got here uh, with more use of the airbrush and sort of less edge highlighting uh, gives you a really great miniature for for gaming and for tournaments you can see the face has all been painted on this as well so you've got all the facial details have been painted on these as well and even the goggles on them on the sort of driver as well have all been painted with a reflection and catch lights which is just lovely Next, let's pull forward one of the Berserks. Again, a really awesome miniature. We've got to start with a double fist, uh, as you can see here. I love the aggressive attacking pose. You can see all the eyes and flesh all fully painted to a really nice standard. Again, you've got the weathering on those armored gauntlets as well, which just looks great. Uh, again, real nice use of that. You've got all the hair and details on the beard have all been fully painted. Uh, and again, we've got this lovely Arctic Tundra base just with snow effects on there just to sort of integrate the model. It's probably a little bit cold, but, uh, but doesn't care. So just a really great miniature. 
Here's another one with a Plasma Axe. Again, really great model. I love the use again of that purple on the Plasma Blades. It just works really, really well. And you can see here, this guy's got a robotic arm with all the metallics just picked out with obviously just weathering on there as well. Uh, again, use of orange on the body suit as well, which I think is great. And the power pack for, for, the, for him as well, which is just really nice. Uh, so that's one of the Plasma Axe wielding berserks. Uh, next, we'll grab the uh, mole launcher, which I think is brilliant. Uh, again, really nice nod back to that older sort of technology from, from sort of second edition. Uh, use of the green there on the lens on the gun just works really nicely. And again, you've got a really nice detail on the miniature, all the flesh done really well with nice highlight stage. Uh, and same again on the orange, you've got all that weathering and highlighting that's been done on there also. So that's just one of the mole launchers. So here's one of the hearth guards, again, in really cool shooting pose. Again, you've got that plasma blade as well. Uh, again, that use of purple just on the blade and also on the plasma coils on the pistol, which is just brilliant. Um, again, you can see the use on the sort of lights on the chest as well. And I love the fact that all the little runes and things are picked out in that lovely gold as well. As you can see, you've got the white stripe there just on the shoulders, uh, just to pick out sort of like the unit marking and also the Trans Hyperion Alliance logo on the other shoulder. But again, that dark metallic there just used on the pipe works, that spinal part of the miniature as well, which is just really nice. Uh, so that's one of the hearth guard so here's one of the squad leaders from the hearthkin warriors again there's 60 of them in the force a really amazing miniature again very stoic pose here with that sword held aloft and you can see just shooting someone or finishing someone off obviously there with a pistol aimed at the floor uh, again you see the gloves done in a nice alternating color which just really picks out the gloves on this miniature as well you've got the use of purple just on the sort of lights and things on the chest and also on the blade uh, and we've got this lovely subtle orange transition from light to dark, obviously just emulating lighting from above, which is just really nicely done with some edge highlighting just done on upper facings, which is just brilliant. Uh, that's one of these awesome Hearthkin warriors from the, from the load that we've got in the army. So here's one of the missile launchers from the force. Again, really, really awesome bit of kit. I love the fact that all the missiles are picked out in that lovely white there, as you can see. Uh, it just works really well with the white on the shoulder pads uh, with those numbers and the transfers and the Trans Hyperion Alliance. Uh, logo on the other one uh, but again all the really nice subtle highlighting there on the cloth work of the trousers as well and the arms as well which is just done really nicely uh, but that's one of the missile launchers from the army then we have the other formidable weapon from the infantry which is the magnum rail you can see this chap here i love the little lens picked out in red on the top of the gun as well and you can see all the facial details all fully painted and highlighted with eyes and everything as well which is just really nicely done uh, if we have a look around the back, this guy's obviously got some bionic legs as well, which is just uh, a bit cool for him. Uh, but you can see all the metallics and things on there just picked out with some weathering, which is just nicely executed. So that's one of the Magna Rail rifles. Do really love the Iron Master. Just a great miniature. Again, nice use of different colours on the goggles. And you can see the eyes and everything all fully painted and flesh all done nicely on him. Uh, you can see all these tools and things. I love the use of the, the sort of desaturated darker brown just on some of the pouches and some of the leather areas of the miniature. And just a bit of weathering there on the metallics as well to add a bit of interest and detail to them. But this is the awesome Iron Master from the, the Force. So let's have a look at some of the robots that go with the Iron Master. We've got this chap here with that bib uh, that's got all the tools in it, or that sort of uh, lovely sort of holder there for all the tools. You can see again that orange with just a bit of weathering on there just to show a bit of interest and, and sort of use as well, which is just great. So that's just one of the Iron Master's robots. We'll have a look at a few of the others. I do find this one quite comical with a little mallet. I think that's quite cool. Uh, borrowing Thor's hammer there, but uh, just really, really nicely executed uh, with that lovely subtle transition on the orange and just the light on the front picked down that purple uh, just to tie that into the rest of the army and uh, all the metallics on the base. And also him have got nice areas of interest and detail done to them as well with some weathering. Altar of the Destins, you can see here, again, really nicely painted with uh, weathering on the armor, all the face painted with multiple highlights, and then also we've got the eyes all painted there as well. Uh, again, that lovely purple sort of color on the blade, that lovely subtle transition that's just been done on there. I love the use of the aged gold just on the areas of the miniature also. Uh, and you can see that lovely purple cloth just on the back, uh, but all the runes and things on the armor also done in the gold uh, just to work with the overall color scheme. Here's one of the two Carls for the Force, and you can see just in that very stoic pointing pose, again, nice weathering on the armor, again, the use of purple for the various details. We've also got this crest as well, which is just really cool. Uh, you've obviously got the gold on there, just done nicely, but all the weapons are magnetized, again, so that they can be interchanged just for our clients to just switch weapons for, for gaming. Uh, but that's just one of the two Carls. The other Carl from the Force, you can see here, again, just in a bit more of a stoic pose, with that storm bolter again these are fully magnetized so they are interchangeable for our clients uh, but you can see all the eyes and everything painted and the flesh is all done nicely on these uh, again really really nice clean purple cloth just on the back also as well
Another one of the Iron Here champions here, you can just see with that axe in that charging pose, love the use of purple on the axe and also on the sort of uh, braided hair at the back here, which is great. I love the aggressive attacking pose and you can see all the teeth and eyes all fully painted on the miniature as well, just to not spare those details. Uh, but you've got this massive armored shield on the other, uh, other arm, which is just great with all the sort of runes and icons all painted in gold. Uh, but that's another one of these awesome Iron Here champions. So next we've got Yacht Grendok, the Carl uh, limited edition one, which is just awesome. And you can see in that very stoic pose, just find that Storm Bolter with real no care at all. Uh, but just great miniature, really great pose. Uh, Greg's done a great job of highlighting all the armor and also adding that weathering and chipping and damage on there. Uh, again, use of that purple just consistently across the force just to add those areas of interest to the specific details that are consistent across the army, um, but just really, really well executed and all the facial details all painted to a quite nice and standard as well. And lastly, we have the Grimnir, uh, really, really awesome miniature. Again, that awesome sort of levitating pose. You can see Greg's flip the color scheme, which I think works really well, just obviously main color or as purple with all the accents and runes in orange. Uh, and you can see uh, the same consistent use of the same tones and colors for the sort of gloves, uh, which is just really nice and nods to other miniatures in the army. And again, you can see all the golds with nice highlighting done on them also as well. Uh, so that's just the Grimnir. And then finally, we have both drones to go with the Grimnir. Again, that lovely, subtle or lights to dark orange uh, gradient and transition just on the front of the miniature with that sort of purple light in the center and all the runes painted as well in that complementary kind of like warm gold, uh, which is just really nice. But that's the two drones to go with the Grimnir to finish up this army. And that is this awesome, awesome and massive trans Hyperion Leagues of Votan army. Um, I know that Greg had a phenomenal time working on it with, and working on such a, a variation of miniatures and such a large force. Um, it's off now to go and dominate the galaxy for our clients. Really do hope you like this. If you're interested in a commission with us here at Siege, head to the description of this video where you can find a link to the Siege website and our contact form so you can fill in an inquiry and get a quote from us. So from all the team here and myself, a massive thank you for watching the video. I do hope you've liked this trans Hyperion Leagues of Botan army. It's been a pleasure to work on and I'll see you very soon on the next one. Take care.